Hello, all you lovely people out there, and welcome to a special Maker Day workshop. My name is Rachel, and I typically work the circulation desk peddling books. But today, I'm very excited because we're going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, which is special effects makeup, specifically body paint. Today, we're going to go over different types of paints used for body paint, different brands of body paint, tools used to apply the paint, and finally, I'm going to show you how I apply my body paint for one of the char characters I cosplay as. Before you paint yourself green, know your skin. Are you allergic to any of the ingredients in the paint you're buying? Unsure? Do a patch test. Most body paints have uh, the ingredients listed on the website or on the back of the package when you purchase them. If you're not sure how it reacts to your skin and your skin's very sensitive like mine, take a little bit of the paint and put it on the small of your wrist, right on the inside, do a little dot. Leave it on for maybe about 10 minutes to an hour, just to be safe. If you have a reaction, then you know not to put that all over your face. But if your skin is cool with it, then go for it. You also need to think about how much you are willing to spend. Some of this can get pretty expensive, especially some of the higher end paints, much like the alcohol activated paints. A very specialized palette can run you about $80. So if you're just looking to play around, I'd start to go on the cheaper end of the paint and work your way up. Make sure you also have makeup remover for your paint. Most of these paints come off with soap or water, but like I said, some of the more specialized paints, they need special removers for them. But usually, soap and water just is fine. And do some research. If you don't know, ask somebody. I find that the internet is a very good tool to help you on your body paint endeavors. I'm self-taught, so I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials and I did a lot of research through Google. I think I learned best by just watching and seeing what all the other cosplayers were doing and trying to um, replicate their results, but with my own makeup. There are different types of paints. Some of them that we're going to be talking about today are cream paint, water activated paint, alcohol activated paint, and finally grease paint. First up is cream paint. It's usually found in a makeup tube, a jar, or a stick, and it's an oil-based paint. They come in many different colors and can be applied with a brush or a sponge. They're cheap, and they are easy to find in stores or online. Some of the cream paints I have found have been at the Halloween store or sometimes Hot Topic sells it. Even you can find some of these paints at Target and Walmart. They're good for first time users or for people who just want to try it out. They're easy to blend together and create cool effects such as wounds, burns, bruises, different crazy colors. You can go wild and make different patterns on your skin with cream paints. However, they do come off easily, and I don't recommend using cream paint on your hands because they must be sealed and set with powder. Cream paints I only recommend to be put on your face and your neck. This paint is very easily transferable, and if you rub up against something like your clothing or your, um, say you're picking up something, the cream paint will come off of your hands and it will go right onto whatever you're holding. So you don't want to mess up all that great work you spent just for it to come off. So try and stick it to your face and your neck or a different spot on your arms, but not your entire body for cream paints. Popular brands of cream-based paint are Krylon, Ben Nye, NYX, Mayron, and Graftobin. I can't really speak for NYX because I've never used it before, but I know a lot of people who like it and use it all the time. I do like Mayron, they're pretty good. As you can see, they come in a tube and a stick. And my favorite on the list is definitely Krylon. Right up at the top on the left-hand side is their Burn Wheel. It runs about $12 to $15 if you can find it online. But as you can see, it has multiple colors on there and it can create a cool burn or wound looking effect. 
Like I said, I really like cream-based paints. I think they're great for neat, making neat effects with your body paint, but I only recommend you putting them on your face and your neck because they are very easily transferable. Next, we're going to talk about water activated paint. Water activated paint comes in a hard cake and becomes activated when in contact with water. It can be applied to the skin with brushes and sponges. So you take a little bit of water, put it on your brush and sponge, the paint becomes activated, hence water activated paint, and you can spread it all over your skin. I like to use a mixing liquid with my water activated paint mainly because I think it sticks to my skin easier. It comes in many different colors and mainly found on online stores. I have trouble finding water activated paint that I like in house in stores, but it's easy to find online. It comes off with water and it must be sealed with powders or spray. As you can see in this picture right on the right, I'm wearing my Bride Witch costume from Left 4 Dead 2. And I've painted my entire face, my neck, my chest, my arms, and my hands with this water-activated paint. I really liked it. It was such a fun costume to do. As you can see, you have great coverage. You don't have many streaks or lines with water-activated paint. If you set it correctly and use multiple coats, I do have it on my hands, but I really wouldn't recommend for putting it on the palms of your hands especially when you're trying to pick up or interact with things because unfortunately this paint does like to rub off as well not as easily as cream paint but by the end of the day your hands are probably going to have it come off popular brands of water activated paint are mayron paradise snazaroo krylon aquacolor graftobin and ben nye I actually have that one right in the middle, the Krylon Aqua Color. I do paint myself blue. It's lasted me a very long time and I've used it at multiple conventions for different days, for different costumes. It goes on easy and that little bit will go a very long way. Mayron Paradise Paint is another one of my favorites along with Snazaroo. Both are pretty cheap and they have many different colors. I think they're great for people getting into body paint as well as putting them on your arms where cream paint is a little easier to come off. Water activated paint stays on a little more. However, like most of these paints, if you do put it on your hands or your um, places where clothing is going to rub off up against, these paints will come off. Next, we're gonna talk about alcohol activated paint. Alcohol activated paint becomes activated when used with 99% alcohol. So you can't use this with water. It'll stay a hard cake. You need to get 99% alcohol, which is medical grade alcohol in a sense. Many of the stores that sell alcohol activated paint will have their own version of activator and you can purchase that right there on the website. It's mainly used in airbrushes and hard paint palettes. It gives really cool under the skin effects like bruises, tattoos, or veins. It stays on really well and it's basically sweat proof and waterproof. I've seen a lot of people use alcohol activated paints when they're going near pools or they're pouring water on their hands and they don't want it to slosh off. It's really good to use on special effects prosthetics. However, Alcohol activated paint, as great as it is, it is super expensive. I was looking at some paints today, trying to see if I wanted to get a new palette, and one of them was $80. And I was like, oh, oh boy. It's difficult to take off, just like it is to put on. You have to use the 99% alcohol or the special cleaners that the stores will sell you and it can be very very drying on your skin so if your skin does not like drying makeup it's probably not going to like alcohol activated paint however it's really good to paint your hands or places that clothing is going to rub up against because it's not going to come off popular brands of alcohol activated paint 
for Skin Illustrator, Ben Nye, Temp2, Endura, and Pro Air. I've used Temp2 before. I've also used Endura. Both are great alcohol activated paints. I've never used Skin Illustrator before, but it is super popular and someday I'd like to purchase it if I had enough money. But like I said, alcohol activated paints can be very expensive. And if you're not using just the brush and you wanted to use an actual airbrush, a nice airbrush is probably gonna set you back 200 or maybe $300. So I just stick to the water activated or the cream based paints if you're looking to get into it and you're not really looking forward to purchasing a huge amount on your first time painting yourself. Next, I'm gonna talk about grease paint. Grease paint is an oil-based paint. It's mainly used by stage performers, mainly clowns. It blends and covers easily. It's very thick and it's applied with a sponge. It must be sealed with powders and it's very slow to dry. I don't recommend grease paint for full body coverage. I only recommend it if you're using it on your face or your neck. Also, as it sounds, it is very, very oily and greasy. So my skin doesn't like it. My skin is super sensitive. Um, I only have it on here because some people do like to use it, but I don't recommend it for body paint. Different types of grease paint that I have seen are for Ben Nye but that's just about it. Next, I'm gonna talk about the alternatives to the paint. As wonderful as body paint is, it likes to rub off from your hands, your joints, or any spot that clothing rub up against. So as you can see in this uh, picture right on your right is me in my Fatal Frame 3 costume, and I am wearing a bodysuit. I have painted my face with body paint and makeup, but I've painted the designs and tattoos on the bodysuit itself, so I wouldn't have to paint it on on the day of the costuming. Generally, if I did that, it would take a couple hours. However, this only took me a couple minutes to put on. It just took a little bit of time to do all the designs beforehand, and I did have some help with my good friend Zelda, who helped me with the tattoos on there. But I do like to wear a bodysuit especially if it's very detailed work you can do it beforehand and here's the good thing bodysuit is not going to rub off on stuff that you're picking up so a lot of cosplayers do like to wear them for the convenience and that you're not going to transfer paint onto anything that you touch some people like to use gloves they'll use tights instead of painting their whole legs and there's another thing called arm socks what it is is a pair of tights that you cut and you make into gloves and you put over your arms. People even put fake fingernails on there and it's such a great way. Even though body paint is wonderful, we don't want it all over the place and we don't want other people to get mad at us for getting it all over the place. I'm ready or not. Or what else do I need? You do need other tools besides body paint. You're going to need some brushes, some sponges, sealing sprays and powders, and more traditional makeup supplies like eyeshadows and eyeliner. Popular brands of different brushes and sponges, different powders are Ben Nye, Mayron, Krylon, and Cinema Secrets. All have their own brush line. They all have different types of powders and setting sprays and they usually have their own sponges as well. Mainly people who make body paints, they also have their own line of applicators for these. I've used pretty much everything listed here. Liquiset is one of the greatest tools, I think, for water activated paint. It helps it stay on super well. I also use Ben Nye's Neutral Set Powder to set my work. You can find many of these online, but you can also find them in your makeup section at Target, at Walmart. I've even, even seen them sometimes at the Halloween store. These tools are readily available to help you make your look as best as it can. I did also say more traditional supplies like eyeshadows and eyeliners. That's because body paint is usually a flat 
color and you want to add dimension and depth to your skin because you've taken out that light source that's hitting it. You're just a flat color. So you want to put on some highlights, some low lights, some contour to really make your makeup pop and make it as real as possible, even though you've painted yourself blue. Why, hello. Now you can finally get a face to the voice. I am Rachel. I usually work at the circulation desk and this is the actual putting on portion of the special effects makeup, the body paint and all that fun stuff. Now that I've talked your ear off, I'm going to talk your ear off some more and you can watch me put on my body paint from my very echoey bathroom. <laughs> I have since put on a wig cap and I have these little, um, these little clip things on there to keep the baby hairs down and into the wig cap. I've also sprayed the wig with cap with a little bit of this, got to be fluid. It works very well at keeping your hair down and in and away from your face when you're doing your body paint. I'm going to be wearing a wig, but if you're not going to be wearing a wig, you don't need to go this extreme. You can just have a band to pull your hair back so it doesn't get into your paint. Hopefully we'll have a really cool um, makeup at the end and it will look something like this. Ooh, well, that looks pretty fun. Stick around and I will show you how to create this look. Before you start putting on your makeup, you should have an idea of what you want to do. I suggest, even if you're not the best of drawlers, get a blank piece of paper, draw out like a oval shape and take different colors, colored pencils, and sketch out what you want your makeup to look like before. If it is a reference of a character that's already out there, great. Use that reference to plan your makeup. Before you put on your makeup, you need to start with a clean face. I've already washed my face and gone through my normal skincare routine, following up with moisturizer. You do want to put on moisturizer just so the paint has something to stick with, and most of this can be really drying out and irritating to your face. So you need to put on a barrier between your skin and the paint. I also use a makeup primer as well. So I'm going to put that on. So, yeet. And I'm going to put on this makeup primer all over my face. Just to give it a little bit of added something something to stick to, you know what I mean? What I'm using on my face, we have our Ben Nye Neutral Set Powder. We have Ben Nye Liquid Set. So that is our mixing liquid. We have Ben Nye Final Seal. It's what I use to spray in my face and set everything. We have Krylon Aqua Color. That is our water-based makeup. I have two colors, blue and yellow. I'm using a Luxe Flat Foundation Brush to put on the makeup. I'm also using a Beauty Blender and a Makeup Wedge Sponge. And to put on the Neutral Set Powder, I have my Fluffy Powder Brush. We have let our makeup primer soak into our skin. Now it is time to start painting. I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to wet it. I'm using the aqua color today so it is a water activated paint so you need water to activate it. I'm not using water. I actually have some liquid set that I'm going to spray into it to activate the paint and paint it all over my face. As I said before, I think the liquid set works a little bit better on keeping it to my skin but you are more than welcome to use whatever you have. If you don't have the mixing liquid, you can just use plain old water for the water activated paint and it should do just fine. Just spray my cake of makeup. Oh my gosh, so hard to do it one handed. So we've got that nice and wet. And I'm going to take my brush And we're going to paint it on our face. Sometimes people just like to go all over, but I like to do it as I've seen before in like this kind of X pattern to get coverage. It may look really, really super thin right now, but that's because it's our first coat. So you don't need to get it looking three coat ready on your first go through of this paint. We are blue. Before I set my makeup, I'm going to do right here a little bit of yellow, so I haven't done that part. As you can see, I've done my lips, done my nose, underside of the nose, the under the eyes, the eyelids. It's transferring a little bit because of um, how my eye shape is. I've also done my ears. 
If you are going to be doing your neck, make sure that you have the back of your neck done. I'm not doing that today because I'm not going out to a convention, but try and get like a mirror so to help see so you can cover the back of your neck or you can get a friend to help you. I'm going to be using a sponge to get this portion right here. I'm going to be using our mixing liquid as well and a little bit of the aqua color. It was working better now because I've sprayed my whole face. So a little dab will do. We're going to dab, dab, dab in there. And we are going to put it on here. I try to avoid putting too much blue on the stripe of my neck because blue and yellow my green. And I don't want to be green for this costume. I just want to be blue and yellow. I have got my fluffy brush and I have loaded it up with our neutral set powder so we can set our first layer of makeup. I'm going to do, usually I do three to make the look um, get all over coverage, but we want to powder and set in between layers so you, it doesn't go anywhere when we are adding more. So get some of that off there because if you have too much on there, you don't want to be white. And we are just going to go over all of our work with the neutral set powder. Make sure we get our ears, our eyes, our mouth all over our neck. I'm going to take my final seal and we are going to spray it. Try and pull it as far away from your faces. Close your eyes, close your mouth, try not to breathe it in. Here we go. have let our powder and our final seal spray set for a little bit and now we are going to go into layer number two. I'm going to spray my spray into my water activated paint and we're going to do the second layer. I'm actually going to do it with a beauty blender just to get more coverage all over there and we're just going to dab 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 that paint on. I'm pressing in that paint and making it look a lot more even as time goes on. So I'm just going to keep going and dabbing in. After I have done dabbing this, I'm going to go and do my neck as well, that yellow part, and we are going to set it as well with another layer of powder and another layer of spray. Oh, well, this is looking pretty good, I think. We might just stop at two layers. If I was at a convention, I would be doing three. I suggest more layers if you're going to be wearing it out all day and running around and sweating. This is after the second layer I have done. What I'm using on my face, I'm going to be using Ben Nye Neutral Set, Ben Nye Final Seal, the Krylon Bruise Wheel. This is a cream-based makeup. ColourPop Blue Moon and Uh Huh Honey both eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to be using a Wet n Wild Blue Eyeshadow Palette, Kat Von D Tattoo Liner, Urban Decay Perversion Mascara, and finally Krylon Fixing Spray. We are going to give ourselves some highlights, we're going to give ourselves some lowlights, we're going to do a little bit of contour. I'm going to take this darker color here, we're going to use Starry Eyed. You're not going to start your contour down here, you're going to actually take where your hairline is, right near your ear, and we are going to work that down. And you can be a little bit bigger with this contour than you would normally do for your regular makeup because we are going to be a little bit bigger. We're going to be bolder, darling. And we have not blended yet, but we are going to take a little bit of a darker color. We're going to take Mad About Me. Ooh. And we are going to go in there Sorry, I'm being very quiet. I'm, I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating hard. <laughs> this is a little bit, kind of, if you think about it, it's the fine line between regular makeup and stage makeup. I'm going to take this moonlight color right in there, and we are going to blend this out. So we want to get the color that is closest to the actual color that we have on our face. I'm going to blend. After I put this on, 
I'm going to take the beauty blender that we had a little bit of our paint on and I'm going to smudge it out a little bit. Oh, and I pushed it down. I wasn't going along to make the line any harsher. I was taking it and I was pulling. So we would pull down, pull down. We're just going to go over our work. We don't have a lot of color on here. I didn't spray it. This is just a little bit wet with some of the color on. We're just going to go over it. I'm going to pull down and blend a little. We are going to take the exact same colors after doing our contour right there, and we are going to do alongside of our nose. So we're just going to do that right down there, giving our nose a little bit of shadow. So we're going to do the sides of our nose. We're also going to do a little bit of our chin right here to give us some dimension. Dimension, huh? Oh, you guys didn't know you were going to get puns as well. And we are going to do up here along our hairline as well to give a little bit of shadow. Fun, fun. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on my cheeks. I'm going to use the starry eyed, I'm going to use the darker color, and I'm going to use the lighter color. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the beauty blender to blend them all in. I've blended out, blended down. I'm also going to take another lighter color that is a different shade of blue and we're going to lighten it up a little bit, blending as we go. We're going to bring this up into our contour. We're going to put it on the inside, right down in here. And we're going to do it up here onto our hairline as well. Same color, and we're going to do a little bit in our chin. We're going to do it a little bit right here. Brighten it up. We're going to brighten up our forehead as well. <laughs> Don't want to do that into the computer. And we are going to go underneath our eye with it as well. Get into any of those folds, those creases. The paint may have not stayed on as well. This is going to make up the difference. So now we're going to do our eyes. I have already put an eye primer onto my eyes. You can see it's a little bit of a different color than it was before. That way we can have something for our makeup to stick to. I'm going to create like kind of like a dragon wing effect. So we're going to use the same colors that we have been using. We are going to take that starry eyed and we are going to bring it up right kind of where we had drawn our line for our nose. And we are going to bring it up and we are going to wing it out. And we are going to bring it back down to the corner of our eye. We are back. We have done both on both of our eyes. I have also put up a shade so you can see this better. And we are going to take a little bit of our darker color. Same palette we've been using on the same brush. And we are going to go over what we have done. So we're going to just continue with that dark color up here. Along our eye, bringing it down right into the corner. Give me this, ooh, ooshy wingy look. We are also going to take the light color and we are going to pull it down we have brought yellow into our look. I have already placed it onto my eye and a little bit on my lid and I've blended it up up into that makeup as you can see. I'm just putting it on there so we have sweet spot in this palette and we are just going to go over that eyelid and we're going to bring it up into the wing. All right we are going to take that same yellow and we're actually going to bring it down 
our nose. The color down onto our nose. And we're going to use it a little bit right here too. And a little bit in the center of our chin. Also going to go over here on our side that we did our contour. And we're going to blend that in, giving us two different colors. I'm going to take some sparkles. Love them sparkles. Because we are also a dragon, I'm going to put it onto our lid. Since we have last talked, I have lined both of my eyes with liquid eyeliner. Because I have a more hooded eye and my lid, um, the skin likes to fall over my lid, I did a very, very tight line. If you have eyes like me, you don't want to put way too much um, eyeliner on because it's just going to hide right in that fold of your eye. So we just took it and we went really, really tight to the lash line. We didn't start the wing up closer. We actually started it down by the corner of our eye and we winged, we winged it out. Winged it out with of this white. And we are going to do right into the corner of our eye. Right in there. I have mascaraed my eyes and now we are going to take care of this eyebrow situation. I have a little bit of cream based makeup here right here. Cream based body paint. And we're going to take our angled brush with a little bit of the color that matches our wig. And we are going to paint our eyebrows on. There you go. These are cream based paints. So, as like I said before, we need to set them in powder. So I've taken my Nutra set, and I've got my big baby brush here as well. We are going to get the powder on there, and we are going to set those eyebrows. Here I am, powdering and setting all of our lovely work. Don't forget, you put it on there, you want it to stay the big guns. We're going to set with this stuff. Remember, hold away, close your eyes, try not to breathe it in. Whoa! My goodness, I have almost forgot. We are going to do our lips. So I have some liquid lipstick right here, and we are going to paint our lips. I have since put on the rest of my costume. I have my wigs, my horns, my ears, and I've put on my bodysuit that has my fingernails on there. Because as we said before, water-based paint is not good for your palms. I don't want that transfer to happen if I'm gonna grab stuff. I had a really great time putting on this makeup. I hope you had a great time seeing how it showed up and how it turned out. When conventions and Halloween becomes a thing again, I hopefully you can join me in the wonderful world of body paint. I'd love to see your great creations. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me with this special Maker Day workshop. And I'll see you at the library. Before we go, you're going to have to take all of this off. So you're going to just use soap and water to take it off. I have makeup remover wipes that I take off my makeup with. And this stuff right here, it holds on a little bit better. So I just take some Vaseline, leave it on for five minutes, and then the liquid lipstick should come off. You also wanna clean your brushes as well. When I'm cleaning my brushes, I use a mixture of equal parts Dawn dish detergent and olive oil. I take that, put it into a little tub, and put my brushes in and slosh it around to get all the color off. You wanna make sure your brushes are nice for your next time of body painting and you don't want to throw them away after every time. That's it, that's the real end. Ooh, make sure you clean your brushes and wash your face. 
Maybe even give yourself a facial because you deserve it and your skin might be stressed out. Bye.